Alright guys, so let's talk about the West and Russia today. For every action, there's always a pushback. And sometimes what you do will get the exact opposite results of what you want. Just a few days ago, the US and the UK, they took coordinated action. They moved to sanction Russia again and this time, the hammer fell on Russian metals. They have banned Russian metals from entering the big exchanges in the world. So Russian aluminum, copper and nickel will be blocked from the two biggest metal exchanges in the world. And this is the LME in the UK and the COMEX in the US. Any Russian supply after April 13 can't enter these exchanges. And to no one's surprise, aluminum and nickel prices surge because of the threat of a supply crunch. As if inflation isn't bad enough, now the prices of metals are going to stay elevated because of US sanctions. Aluminum surged by 9.4%, nickel also spiked over 8% as well. And this will only hurt countries in the West that need commodity prices to head down and not go up. Europe, for example, will be suffering even more. Industrial production is down massively thanks to all these higher energy costs. If the price of metals keep increasing, what will that do to manufacturing in countries like Germany? It will grind their industries deeper into the mud, into the ground. And it's funny that Olaf Scholz is in China warning of overcapacity. But the bigger issue here is the input costs across the West going up. The real story is a result of the Western sanctions hitting Russia. When you cut away a big commodity producer, you have to expect higher input costs for your economy. The German company Siemens said it best. Global value chains have been building up over the last 50 years. How naive do you need to be to believe that this can change within 6 or 12 months? And with Russian metals cut away from Western exchanges, this is going to complicate the value chain at the most basic level. And here's how naive the sanctions on metals truly are. Russia accounts for a major portion of global production, 5% of aluminum, 6% of refined nickel, and 4% of copper. The only countries with bigger production are India and China. Janet Yellen, who came up with the idea, has a simple goal. She wants to reduce Russian metal revenues. By restricting Russian supply from entering the LME and the COMEX, she wants to force Russia to sell at a discount. So if Russia can't offload their exports in London, they'll be forced to sell directly to buyers at lower prices. Well, at least that's the whole idea. But as you'll see, this won't make a dent on Russian metal revenues. In fact, it might even increase what Moscow is earning today. On the flip side, this is going to hurt the Western economies. Yellen's promise of protecting our partners and allies from unwanted spillover effects would most definitely break. It will be just like the sanctions on Russian oil. By blocking the trade of Russian metals, Europe will be paying more, especially when the G7 and NATO they are busy scrambling around to produce ammunition for Ukraine. So let's understand why this won't collapse Russian revenues. It could instead cause Putin to earn even more. In the LME alone, Russia is the largest source of metals. Here's how ridiculous the whole situation is. Russian supply accounts for 91% of aluminum, 62% of copper, and 36% of nickel. In total, 40% of inventories in London are from Russia. And over time, these stockpiles will be drawn down and delivered to all the customers. How is the LME going to make up for this big shortfall? There are so many things that could go wrong. We could get a situation where buying overwhelms supply and we get a short squeeze where buyers want a physical metal but there's not enough going around. So prices will rise. It happened to nickel just after Russia went into Ukraine. Just the fear of sanctions alone back then on nickel caused prices to double within hours. It went from $50,000 a ton to hundred grand, and things became so bad that LME had to cancel trading for the first time ever. And that's how crazy things became. That's why trying to sanction Russian commodities isn't a good idea. It will cause big dislocations. We have seen it happen in the oil markets and we're going to witness it again in the metals market. It puts upward pressure on prices which will impact inflation. It pushes the fragile economy closer towards the edge of a cliff. If the inputs of global industries rise higher, prices will continue to rise and this will cripple the consumer more and prevent central banks from lowering interest rates. Every time the West punishes Russia with sanctions, it caused the price of aluminum to rocket higher and it's easily a 20% increase and in some instances, over 30%. Just like oil, when metal prices rise higher, Russia is going to benefit from it as well. We must look at the specifics of the sanctions. The curbs imposed by Yellen do not impact the consumption of Russian metals and this means countries can still buy metals from Moscow and use them. 
trade is still very possible, just not through the Western exchanges. They could head to Russian companies directly to discuss terms. The metals will still flow to the global economy and Putin will still make his money. And I want us to recall this chart of Russian oil revenues. Even after all the sanctions and the price cap, Russian revenues actually went up. It doubled in March from a year ago, hitting over 1.3 trillion rubles. A big part of that came from the overall price of crude going up. I'm sure sanctions forced a discount on the volumes, but Russia put a lot of levers to jack the overall price up. One strategy they used was production cuts, deny the market additional volume of crude oil and cause a supply side crunch. And true enough, it sent prices much higher over time. And this is one strategy Russia can execute again. Because they are such big producers, any cuts can impact the markets to a very big degree. Russo, the Russian aluminum giant, is warning of production cuts. They claim 36% of sales are at risk. Personally, I don't believe they are in trouble, but it could be an excuse to cut supply to jack prices up even higher. If Russo cuts production, that might cause a supply crunch and send aluminum prices higher. That alone could result in higher revenues for Putin. But guess who's the big winner of this? Once again, it's China. Because Russian metals can't flow into the Western exchanges, there's only one avenue left, one outlet left. Shanghai is the only major hub left to accept Russian industrial metals. Russia is not only China's biggest oil supplier, they are the biggest supplier of metals as well. It's the simple law of supply and demand. Supply gets drained away from the West, this causes prices to go up there. So the US and Europe will suffer from more expensive metals. But in China, the metal floods in and pushes prices down. And considering China's big industrial push, this is going to help them tremendously. Before the conflict, the majority of Chinese imports were non-Russian. It came from elsewhere. However, since February 2022, the majority of aluminum entering China is from Moscow. In some instances, almost 100% of the supply was Russian. And this flood of metals allows China to access a huge amount of metals at cheaper prices from the West. Once again, it lowers manufacturing costs, allowing China to build and sell products at very competitive prices. When the US or Europe complains of overcapacity, they don't really realize that it's a byproduct of their sanctions. They are creating the very monster they are afraid of. Every time they try to punish Russia, it only makes China even stronger. It grows the Chinese economy even further. The latest GDP figures from China are out. It has grown by 5.3% in the first quarter this year. Expectations were around 4.6%, but China's growth was way higher than all the estimates. And where do you think this growth is coming from? China's real estate is still imploding. Property investment fell by almost 10% in the same quarter, Q1. Sales fell by over 23%, but yet China's overall GDP grew by 5.3%. And what does this tell you? This tells us that China's industrial push is working. Chinese factories are producing so much that they can actually counter their real estate collapse. It's unprecedented. A 10% crash is recessionary or even depressionary levels, but yet Chinese growth is powering on ahead. A big part of this is powered by cheap Russian commodities. And if we look at the growth patterns, it's undeniable where China's growth is coming from. It's all driven by manufacturing. Retail sales are recovering very slowly because people are still affected by the real estate collapse. Local Chinese people are still very cautious about spending money and it will take a lot of time to improve. Industrial production is powering the Chinese economy ahead. Growth is way above the previous trend, and this is why the West is so angry with China. But they don't realize that this is a byproduct of the Russian sanctions. Now granted, China has robust supply chains. They have a cheaper labor force versus the US and Europe. But it's the cheap commodities, the oil and gas and metals from Russia that's making this crazy growth possible. It's not a coincidence that as Europe deindustrializes, China is getting stronger. The advantages of Russian energy and metals have shifted to China. The overcapacity crisis isn't a China problem. It's a sanctions problem. The G7, they are the architects of their own demise. Now that's just China. The story is going to get much worse. The ban on Russian metals could trigger a domino effect that could hurt the US dollar itself. If the supply of Russian metals flows to the Shanghai exchange, who is in charge? It will be China and not the West. Beijing can easily dictate the terms of trade, especially when they control the majority of the metals. Take aluminum for example.
China is the world's biggest producer and consumer of the commodity. They account for 59% of global production. And if you throw in Russia's 6% into the mix, around two-thirds of the entire market, 66%, is controlled by one single country, and that country is China. Slapping sanctions on Russia just make Beijing even stronger. It's shifting power away from the COMEX and the LME towards the Shanghai exchange. And if you were China, would you prefer to transact in US dollars or your local currency, the Chinese yuan? The answer should be very obvious. You'll want to bypass the world reserve currency. And here's how this can happen through a price divergence. When the sanctions were announced, aluminum prices in the LME spiked by almost 10%. However, something interesting happened in the Shanghai exchange. Prices only rose by 3%. That's three times less than in London. Metal prices in China are more stable because they have a larger pool of supply. And once again, this is thanks to Russian volumes. So if you're a factory that consumes the metal, where are you going to buy from? Do you get it from the LME at higher prices or buy your supply from China and stretch your money even further? So this price arbitrage allows Beijing to sell even more aluminum in the Chinese Yuan. Commodities are just raw materials and if you can buy them at a cheaper price, it makes sense to do so. The dollar today still makes up the majority of global reserves. The US dollar still accounts for 59% of the market share. And a big part of this is the need to hold the reserve currency for trade. And if China continues cornering the commodity markets while exporting cheap goods, it's not good for the dollar's future more and more exports will be priced outside of the dollar. The reserve status will get hammered even more. Some exports will be priced in the yuan of course, others in local currencies. But the end result is still the same, further de-dollarization. And if Russian metals continue flooding to China, prices will fall in Shanghai versus London. Buyers who want cheap metals will have to bypass the dollar and transact in yuan. And once again, this is a net negative for the West. So this move by the West to punish Russian metal will backfire badly. It will just shift the supply of industrial metals to China. It will make Putin and Xi work closer together than ever. The Russian giant Russo generated 23% of their revenue from China alone. And they have bought a 30% stake in a Chinese alumina plant. And this investment and reliance will continue to accelerate. I mean, just look at this objectively. The G7 has given Russia no alternative. Commodities from oil and gas to metals, they have no choice but to keep flooding into China. They will get a ton of cheap energy and other inputs to grow their industries even further. Looking at China's power generation figures, we can see a clear sign of their production strength. We are now back to the pre-lockdown levels of industrial growth. It's on an upward trajectory. There's massive activity from Chinese industries, and this include factories, utilities, and mines. Business is booming. Manufacturing is rising and output is heating up. It's driving a lot of growth. Unlike the West, China can afford to crank up power generation and keep exporting deflation to the world. The more Biden sanctions Russia, the more it's helping to grow China's economy. We have seen this before in the oil markets and it's going to repeat again in metals as well. So prepare for a world of high inflation. Russian revenues won't collapse and the biggest winner once again is Beijing. But let me know what you think. Was sanctioning Russian metals a good idea? And who benefits the most from this? Let me know in the comments below. Stay safe, be sure to smash the like button and subscribe as we navigate through these crazy times.